guys, welcome back to Scott Family Homestead. Today, I'm gonna do a video that I've been really excited about and that's showing off our new cook stove. If you have been here a while, you know that we had an antique cook stove here for a while, uh, but we upgraded to a newer version and uh, I've got a few reasons for that. We're gonna talk about that. First, I'll let you know I've got some cook stove videos and I'm gonna link them in the description. The first is all about choosing a cook stove, uh, what to look for, and kind of how to decide what is gonna work for you and your family. Um, I also have a review of the Regina uh, by Lynn Carr cook stove from our other home. We loved that one as our main heat source. It had a much bigger firebox in it. I have a whole review on that and all the details if you're looking for something to really heat your home. This one we chose because it is great for in a kitchen. Uh, we have a smaller kitchen here. We have a fireplace that heats the rest of the house. This is kind of our bonus fireplace. We don't need it to heat the entire house, but it does heat the bedrooms above here. And I'm really excited to show it to you today. This is the Gulliver stove by Gucci, um, and we just love it. The whole thing is only about 38 inches wide and 24 inches deep, so it's a really reasonable size for cook stoves in a small room like a kitchen. So we really, really love this stove. Uh, we've been using it a lot, but we're kind of just getting into the season where we can use it daily. We installed this in the spring and we didn't get a ton of time to cook in it, but now that I've had a few days of keeping that fire going all day, cooking in it, uh, baking bread, making meals on the top, we just absolutely love it. We do still have a gas stove that we use for a lot of things. In our other home, we were looking at getting a wood stove and kind of just stumbled upon the idea of having the benefit of having an oven on it. And it kind of threw us into the world of cook stoves and we've really loved it ever since. We're not affiliated with this brand or Obadiah's, which is where we purchased it. Uh, but we have had really good experiences with both. We're really happy with it. And so I'm gonna show you kind of the basics of how a wood cook stove works. And then this one specifically, uh, dimensions, the firebox, the oven, why we love it. So let's go ahead and get started. So first I wanna talk a little bit about the stove and how it is set up. So this one has the option of putting the chimney on either side. So when you order it, you order that to how it's gonna fit in your space. This one has a nice big oven and a smaller firebox. Uh, the firebox has a couple features we really love, so we'll get to that in a minute. You have your cast iron top, um, and it does have the rings that you can remove if you want heat directly under your pans or whatever you're cooking on top. We opted for the warming oven. We really, really love this. We use it a lot. Um, I raise my bread in there, and you can also use it to keep food warm. Like if Ryan doesn't eat dinner with us for some reason or one of the kids has an activity, I can put their plate in there and it keeps it nice and warm for them for when they get home. And so we are big fans of this. They do also have an option of just a shelf up there or you can do it without the back and just have the stove. You can see we have the soapstone finish. Uh, it is a little bit of an upcharge for that. They do have some other colors available. I believe red, red is a really, common cook stove color. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, a lot of these come from Europe and that must be a color that they really like. Uh, you can also get it in black and I think there's a cream option as well. So like I said, we got this from Obadiah's. We had a bit of a shipping error where the top, the warming oven came crushed. Uh, they sent us a new one right away and it was all taken care of. So as far as customer service, uh, they did great. Uh, we've had really good experience there. When you purchase this, the freight is included um, and it is insured, so they will take care of any kind of issues that come from that. Uh, one of the reasons that we chose this stove, you can see we don't have a huge space that we are working with here. Uh, the stove has low clearances on the back and sides, so we were able to kind of tuck it into a corner. That's something you'll have to look at when you're buying a cook stove is the clearances. Some of them you have to have very wide clearances to the side and the back. Um, it does help if you have a flame retardant barrier like the stone and tile. Some cook stoves, uh, they allow you to reduce your clearances if you have a barrier put in place. So we have the stone. You can see we haven't finished it and trimmed it out yet, uh, but these were just stone panels that we got from Home Depot. And we went ahead and installed those up top and on the floor. So we've got the nice barrier in place there. 
Um, another couple reasons that we picked this stove specifically, and I talk about this in my other video as well, it is UL certified. Uh, that means your insurance company is going to like it a lot better than the antiques or any that aren't UL certified. A lot of stoves are headed that direction. They're getting that certification that they didn't have even two or three years ago when we bought our last stove. We had like two options to choose from last time around. Uh, now a lot of these stoves are getting certified, which is awesome. Um, this one also qualified for an energy credit because it's an efficient stove. So that was a big bonus to buying it. We did get a tax benefit uh, for that. And then also a big one for me this time around was the oven size. I'm gonna show you um, the size of the firebox in the oven next, and we'll kind of talk about that. But I really wanted something that I could fit a little bit more into with my Regina cook stove. It was really tight with a nine by 13 and we were able to make it work. But with this one, I actually have two racks in here. We are able to cook multiple things at a time and it fits a lot of stuff. So let me show that to you now. Okay, first up we've got the firebox. Now it is big enough to put some decent sized wood into it, but it's not gigantic. And so it's not heating the entire kitchen. It's not overheating the kitchen. Um, it gets nice and warm in here, real toasty if you're trying to get your oven going. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. This one does have a rack in it. I don't know if you can see that in there. Uh, what that is, is you can put your wood up on top of that and bring the heat really close to your surface up here. That's really handy if it is warm outside or it's summertime and you just want to boil some water or something and not have a big roaring fire in here. You can bring the fire right up to the surface and heat stuff on the top here. I have not seen that in other cook stoves. That was particular to this one and I really love that feature. This firebox is 11 inches wide and 15 deep, so you can fit some decent sized wood in there, but you will see we generally use smaller stuff uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it just fits in there easy, and number two, it burns a little hotter if you have those little pieces and you keep stocking the fire. We ordered firewood this year, and so when we did that, we sorted everything as we stacked it. We grabbed all the smallest stuff and we put it in a cook stove pile, so we have an entire separate area for the wood that we are burning in the cook stove. Now you can get into what kind of woods burn best and hottest. So you can get into like species of trees and how things burn differently, uh, which ones are going to burn longer, which ones are going to burn hotter. Uh, I have a book that I love for cook stoves. It's called Wood Cookery and it's by Jane Cooper. I will link it. It's on Amazon and it talks all about different types of firewood. It talks about all different types of cook stoves. It has recipes, all kinds of good stuff if you're looking at cook stove cooking and you can really get into how to best utilize your firebox. Now down here is the clean out and the air. So that allows you to draft air in through the firebox. The very bottom down here is a drawer. We've just got extra parts and pieces in there, uh, but you could put all of your cast iron cookware in there or the things that you use for your cook stove would all fit in there. Now we've got our oven. This oven is almost 14 inches wide and it's over 18 inches deep. So you can put a decent sized pan in here. Now you're not going to go full cookie sheet size, but you can easily fit a 13 by nine in here or one of our um, medium sized cookie sheets. I did buy an extra rack and now with Thanksgiving coming up, I can actually cook two different things in here while my oven is busy with the turkey and I'm really excited to have that extra rack. It's $100. This one has a thermometer on the front, uh, like most, it is in Celsius. I do not like the door thermometers. My other cook stove had it as well. We like to add an oven thermometer in there. It's easier because it's in Fahrenheit, so I know exactly where we're sitting. And I can put it in the middle of the oven, which really gives me a better read on what's going on in there. So I've got my thermometer in there. Up here, we have our control. Uh, what you do with this is if you have this pulled out the way it is right now, your hot air is going to vent right out the chimney. So you're operating this like a normal fireplace. If you want to route the air around your oven and get this heated up, you push this in and then you're gonna have to wait a while and stock your firebox really good, and then that's gonna get this up to heat. It does take a little while, and it's less consistent than a normal oven. 
Um, it takes a little bit to get used to cook stove cooking, but once you get the hang of it or you adjust your recipes a little bit, like with my bread, I just do my bread a little bit longer because it's hard to keep it at 375 in there for the full half hour that my bread goes for. I just let my bread go a little bit longer and it works perfectly. So with this in, it puts the stopper in front of the chimney and it's gonna route your hot air around here first and then up the chimney. That's how most cook stoves are gonna work. And one of the things you wanna watch out for, which we learned pretty quickly, is your air is much cooler when it's going up your chimney at that point. You are gonna have more creosote buildup. All right, on the top here, I've got water. We always run water on here in the winter time because with wood heat, it's very, very dry in your house. And so I've got a little simmer pot here today. Um, it's been going since last night, but this is just orange slices, cranberries. I've got some rosemary and cinnamon sticks in there. Um, it smells really, really good in here. This top is all cast iron, so you can treat it just like a cast iron pan. We use avocado oil to keep it oiled. Um, you wanna oil it when it's cool and then get this going really good. If you can, I suggest opening up all your windows that first time when you are burning that oil off. It does get a little bit smoky and stinky, but it works just like a cast iron pan. Now you could cook on here. I've seen people who make their toast and stuff directly on the cook stove, but mostly you're gonna use it uh, with some sort of pan. We love using our cast iron on here. And it has these rings right here. There's a couple different sized rings. You can remove those if you want more direct heat underneath your pan. You can also do a wok style cooking where you take that out and the pan um, kind of goes right down in there with the fire right below it. And some people love that for cook stove cooking as well. Right now I've just got my kettle up top because we have not been using it, um, but you can have a kettle on here all the time. It's really nice because you've got warm water ready to go at all times. This is the warming oven. I'll show that to you. It does have, it's very heavy because we've got the soapstone um, and you can set it all the way down. It does have your chimney running right through it. So that gives you a lot of heat in here. It stays really nice and warm. It's not hot. You can touch it, uh, but it is really warm. It will raise your bread nice and quickly. I love that. Like I said, it has different finish options. We like the stone. One of the reasons um, it has an extra charge, but stone does hold heat. So even after your fire goes out, you've got a nice warm stove in your kitchen that's gonna continue to radiate heat for much longer. So especially if this goes out in the middle of the night, it's going to continue to warm your home, uh, which is really, really nice. So we love having a cook stove. It's obviously not a necessity, but it is something that we really love for our home. It does heat our home and I love to play around with cooking in it. You're going to find cook stoves have a huge range of pricing. Uh, there's going to be some that are on the cheaper side and you can get as expensive as you want with your cook stoves. This one is about $3,400 right now. It's $600 to add the warming oven. So it ends up right around $4,000 for this stove. Uh, from Obadiah's and freight is included in that. Like I said, I added the the rack in here and I believe it's about $200 extra for the soapstone. Uh, head over to their website and you can check out all the pricing and all the options that they have. And they also have a collection of other beautiful stoves. If you are looking to select one, check out my other video all about choosing a cook stove. Um, it gives you some really great things to kind of ponder and think about before you make your decision. We are really loving this, and I hope to have more cook stove content coming soon. If you like the cook stove content, it's been some of my most watched videos lately. Uh, make sure you give this video a like, uh, make sure you are subscribed, and I'll try to have more coming for you soon. Thank you for hanging out with me today, guys. We appreciate you. We appreciate you following us along and supporting our family, using our links, all the things. Thank you, thank you, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.